What's up everybody, I'm Hoops and Hip Hop. So with Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee on the horizon, the spotlight has definitely been on the Kanto region for the past several months. As we approach the game's release, I thought it would be fun to put some spotlight on Kanto myself, so today we're going to be checking out some facts about every single Kanto Pokemon. Or at least that was the original plan. I was originally going to do one video with facts on every Pokemon, but that proved to take way too long in terms of the length of the video, so I've decided to break this into two parts and do half in this video and then half in another video that will go up next week. With that said though, we've still got 76 Pokemon to cover in this video though, so why don't we go ahead and get started. Okay, so starting things off with Bulbasaur, the voice actor for Bulbasaur in the English dub of the anime is Tara Jane Sands, who coincidentally just so happens to be the voice actor for Mokuba Kaiba in the English dub of Yu-Gi-Oh! as well. Moving on to Ivysaur, Ivysaur is the only second stage grass poison Pokemon that does not require an evolutionary stone to reach its final form. Moving on to that final form, Venusaur just so happens to be the exact same size as another grass-type Pokemon, Tropius. Both Venusaur and Tropius have a height of 6 foot 7 inches, which is 2 meters tall, and a weight of 220.5 pounds, which is also 100 kilograms. With Charmander, its design was actually slightly different back in the day when it was introduced. In its original sprite and first artwork, Charmander's back was depicted as having a small line of spikes down the middle. However, these spikes were never shown again in subsequent sprites or later generations of artwork. With Charmeleon, the anime character Richie, who was Ash's rival during the Indigo League, actually owned a Charmander that evolved into a Charmeleon whose name was Zippo, and this is actually a clever easter egg because the name Zippo actually comes from the popular brand of lighters. Moving on, Charizard was actually the inspiration for the naming of the Chili Cola Charizard, a real-life species of bee that was recently discovered in Chile several years ago. Taking a look at Squirtle, Squirtle's name in Japanese is Zenegame, which literally translates to Baby Pond Turtle. However, according to Pokemon Black and White's television program PokeQuiz, Squirtle also gets its Japanese name Zenigame from the word Zeni, which means money, because apparently Squirtle's shells quote-unquote look like old coins, providing another somewhat odd inspiration for the name. When it comes to Wartortle, it can be seen as somewhat of an ageless wonder. According to various Pokedex entries, Wartortle can live as long as 10,000 years, and its furry tail is seen as a symbol of longevity. With Blastoise, it's obvious that it's inspired by turtles and tortoises, however, its species is known as the Shellfish Pokemon. The reason for this is that Blastoise's cannons may very well have been derived from the functioning tubes that are found in some mussels and other shellfish, therefore explaining this species category. Moving outside of the starters with Caterpie, until the release of Pokemon Platinum when it was able to learn Bug Bite, it was unable to do anything to a Ghost-type Pokemon outside of the struggle move, except lower its speed. Due to this, it was impossible to complete a Generation 1 game using only a Caterpie or a Metapod, because struggle couldn't hit Ghost-types during those games. With Metapod, it shares the same species name with Kakuna, Silcoon, and Cascoon, all being known as the Cocoon Pokemon. In addition to this though, it also shares the same base stat total, learn set, ability, and EV yield with all of these Pokemon, making them very closely related and similar. Moving on to Butterfree, its Generation 2 Pokedex entries highlight how it collects honey every day and it'll rub that honey onto the hairs on its legs to carry it back to its nest. This is likely a reference to the fact that Generation 2 was originally going to feature honey trees much like Generation 4 does before that feature was scrapped and replaced with the headbutt feature. Weedle is known as Beetle in Japan, and this is very likely a nod to the fact that Weedle's original evolutions in the beta of Pokemon Red and Green were actually more so Beetles than the Cocoon and Bee that we know today with Kakuna and Beedrill. Speaking of the early beta Weedle family, Weedle's name at this time was Kokana, which is obviously very similar to its current evolution, Kakuna. With Beedrill, Beedrill was one of the lucky Pokemon that was able to receive a Mega Evolution during Generation 6. However, Mega Beedrill is also the only Mega Evolved Pokemon whose special attack is lower than that of its base form, kind of defeating the purpose of Mega Evolution. With Pidgey, in the English Pokemon Red and Blue beta, Pidgey was originally going to be known as just Pidge. They added a Y, obviously, for the final release, and I think that was a good idea. Speaking of that English beta, 
Pidgeotto was also going to be known as Pidgeot in the English beta. However, Pidgeot was still also Pidgeot in this beta, making for a confusing situation. Speaking of Pidgeot, Pidgeot was depicted with red and yellow tail feathers in its official Generation 1 artwork, while its current artwork that was introduced in Generation 3 depicts it with only red tail feathers. And this discrepancy is expressed in a number of different ways with Pidgeot's various in-game sprites and anime depictions. Rattata and its evolution Raticate share its species name with Pikachu, Raichu, Sandshrew, and Sandslash, all being known as the Mouse Pokemon. What's interesting about this is that all of these Pokemon also have at least one member of their evolution line that has an Alolan variant. With Raticate, Raticate is the only Pokemon that shares its national Pokedex number with the level at which it evolves from its pre-evolution. Moving on to Spearow, according to the very first episode of the anime, Pokemon I Choose You, Spearow is actually colorblind. Its evolved form Spearow in Generation 4 actually weighs the same much as the protagonist of the Generation 4 games, Lucas, and it shares this characteristic with Skunk Tank, Togekiss, Sudowoodo, and Yanma. Moving on to Ekans, in early official artwork of this Pokemon, all of the bands on its body were yellow instead of just the one single one up towards its neck. This was obviously changed in later artwork. Probably the most interesting thing about the Pokemon Arbok is the fact that the pattern on its chest differs depending on where in the world you find it, meaning different patterns are going to appear in different regions. As of Generation 7, there are 20 known patterns, however, only 3 of these have appeared in main series games, leaving it to question whether or not these 17 other patterns will ever be seen in a main series title. With the mascot Pokemon Pikachu, Pikachu technically counts as a starter Pokemon because it's been a starter in Pokemon Yellow, and it's going to be a starter in Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu. With that being said, Pikachu is the only starter Pokemon with a pre-evolved form, having Pichu as its pre-evolution. With its evolved form Raichu, its Fire Red and Sun Pokedex entries talk about how it can faint an Indian elephant with the amount of voltage it contains in its body. This is actually a reference to a 1903 documentary film called Electrocuting an Elephant that was published by Thomas Edison. Moving on to another mouse Pokemon, Sandshrew, Alolan Sandshrew is actually the same exact weight as the Generation 2 protagonist Ethan, weighing 88.2 pounds. Its evolved form Sandslash in the English Pokemon Red and Blue beta was originally known as just Sandstorm as well. Thankfully, it got a really cool name change. With Nidoran Female, due to the fact that it has the female symbol in its name, if you check its summary from Generation 2 onward, it will display as if the Pokemon is genderless as long as it doesn't have a nickname. However, if it does have a nickname, its gender will appear in the summary as normal. For Nidorina, despite the fact that Nidoran female can breed and its male counterpart Nidorino can breed, Nidorina and its evolution Nidoqueen can't breed at all. This makes Nidorina and Nidoqueen the only two Pokemon that can't breed, even though their pre-evolution is able to. Speaking of Nidoqueen, in the original Japanese Pokemon Red and Green games, there was likely an oversight made with Nidoqueen's weight, as it only weighs 6 kilograms instead of the 60 kilograms as it does in every single other game. Moving on to Nidoran Male, it's kind of an interesting coincidence that its family is the stereotypical female pink color, while its female counterpart is also the stereotypical male blue color. With Nidorino, Nidorino is the very first Pokemon to appear in many different forms of Pokemon media. It was the very first Pokemon to appear in the games, appearing in the intro of Pokemon Red and Green and Red and Blue. It's the very first Pokemon to appear in the anime, appearing in the very first sequence of the anime. And it is also the very first Pokemon to be seen and captured in Pokemon Adventures. Surprisingly enough, Nidoking and its female counterpart Nidoqueen are the only Pokemon so far with a Poison Ground typing. Taking a look at Clefairy, the prototype name for Clefairy in the red and green beta was Aria, while its evolution Clefable's name was Ariala. For the fact on Vulpix, we're actually going to be taking a look at Alolan Vulpix, because Alolan Vulpix is the only regional variant that actually has a specific name of its own, being known as Keo Keo, which comes from the Hawaiian word for white. With its evolution Ninetales, Ninetales' name is actually misspelled as Ninetales in the literal sense in the Pokemon trading card game for the Game Boy Color, as well as in some early pre-release material. Moving on to the classic and iconic Pokemon Jigglypuff, it's actually depicted in its Ken Sugimori artwork, as well as in some other appearances such as in Super Smash Bros, with green eyes and light pink fur, which much more closely resembles its shiny form than its regular form. 
When it comes to its evolved form Wigglytuff, it actually has some interesting things to note about its body in the Pokedex. According to various Pokedex entries, Wigglytuff's body is rubbery, however it also has amazingly soft fur, making for a very odd combination. Moving on to Zubat, and oddly enough, no other Pokemon has the same type combination of Poison Flying as Zubat and its evolutionary line. Moving on to Golbat, its Moon Pokedex entry is actually very grim and violent. It states that sometimes they drink so much blood that they can't fly anymore. Then they fall to the ground and become food for other Pokemon. Yikes. With Oddish, Oddish actually has a scientific name given to it, Oddium Wanderous, in its Fire Red and Y Pokedex entries. Its evolved form Gloom is also the only dual-type Pokemon that can evolve into a single-type Pokemon, having the ability to evolve into the pure grass-type Blossom. Its other evolved form Vileplume also happens to be based on the Rafflesia Arnoldi, a very bad-spelling flower that also just so happens to be the world's largest flower. Moving on to Paris, in Generation 1, Poison-type attacks were actually super effective against Bug, making Paris and its evolution Parasect the only Pokémon to have ever had three quadruple weaknesses, that being Fire, Poison, and Ice. Speaking of Parasect, Parasect's Pokédex entry in Pokémon Stadium actually connects the Pokémon world with the real world, noting that its spores are sometimes used as medicine in China. According to its Pokedex entries in Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum, Venonat's large eyes are actually made up of tons of tiny, smaller eyes. Creepy. When it comes to its evolution Venomoth, Venomoth actually was shown having yellow spots on the back of its wings in early official artwork. However, this was later removed in more recent official artwork. Moving on to Diglett, Diglett was actually designed by Shigeki Morimoto, the person who was in charge of the battle system for the original Pokemon games, as well as the person who was responsible for including Mew into the games. Moving on to its evolution Dugtrio, according to its Moon Pokedex entry, these Pokemon are cherished in the Alola region, where they are thought to be feminine deities of the land incarnate. I guess that explains the hair? Moving on to our favorite cat Pokemon Meowth, the voice actress for Meowth was Maddie Blotstein, who also just so happens to voice Yugi's grandpa in Yu-Gi-Oh! Speaking of voice actors, the voice actor for Persian is Rika Matsumoto, the same person who actually voices Ash in the Japanese version of the anime. Here comes a pretty interesting and funny fact about Psyduck. It actually took Psyduck 942 episodes to use the move Water Gun correctly, making it the longest that any Pokemon owned by one of the main characters has ever taken to master a move. With its evolution Golduck, it's often been wondered why this Pokemon isn't a Psychic type because it clearly has the ability to use Psychic moves and that's a focus of its design. This can be further perpetuated by the fact that its name Golduck, while it's not colored gold, is often used in Pokemon to symbolize the Psychic type. Coming up next is Mankey, and Mankey was once again designed by Shigeki Morimoto, the man who created the battle system for Pokemon, and put Mew into the games. We actually have a very interesting fact about its evolution Primeape, as according to Pocket Monsters The Animation, which is the novelization of the Pokemon anime, Primeape is actually the reason why Pokeballs were developed. Moving on to Growlithe, we actually see a Growlithe owned by James of Team Rocket, who is known as Growly, and this dynamic between the two is actually based on an 1872 novel known as A Dog of Flanders, which is a very popular novel in Japan, despite being written in Belgium. With its evolution Arcanine, in the Pokemon Red and Blue beta, Arcanine was originally known as Blaze. However, its Japanese name isn't much better because currently in Japanese it is known as Windy. Next up is Poliwag, and Poliwag is actually the favorite Pokemon of the creator of Pokemon himself, Satoshi Tajiri. With its evolution Poliwhirl, Poliwhirl's sprites and various artwork are inconsistent when it comes to its hands. Some of its artwork and sprites depict its hands as being mitten-like and not having individual fingers, while other pieces of artwork and other sprites depict it as having individual fingers. Next up is Poliwrath, and there's actually a very significant Poliwrath in the Pokemon Adventures manga named Poli, who is a Poliwrath that Red actually owned and was his very first Pokemon ever when it was a Poliwag. Coming up next is Abra, and in the Pokemon Red and Blue English beta, Abra was originally known as Hocus, while its evolved form Kadabra was also known as Pocus. Speaking of things that happened during the Red and Blue era, if an Alakazam is sent out by an opponent in Pokemon Red and Blue while the player's Pokemon has low health, that Alakazam will actually have the cry of a Ghastly. Moving on to Machop, and once again in the English beta of Pokemon Red and Blue, Machop was known as Karate. Thank goodness they did not keep this. 
When it comes to its evolution, Machoke, there's actually something pretty funny to note. In the official Pokemon handbook, Machoke is described as being way too conceited. It says in the handbook that Machoke likes its own body way too much. Sometimes it's too busy looking at itself in the mirror to train, which is the exact opposite, coincidentally, of its description given in Pokemon Stadium that says, although it is incredibly strong, it is always modest. Once again, going back to that Pokemon Red and Blue beta, the final evolution of these Pokemon Machamp was originally known as Judo, once again referencing a fighting style, and once again, thankfully, this was not the final name that it was given. In many ways, Bellsprout can be seen as a parallel to Oddish because in Generation 1 they essentially were. They both were version counterparts to each other and they both were grass types that had a two-stage evolution. This would have continued into Generation 2 originally because just like Oddish, Bellsprout was originally going to have a split evolution as we learned in the recently leaked Gold and Silver beta demo. Moving on to Weepin' Bell, despite the fact that it can learn Leech Life through breeding, Weepin' Bell and its evolutionary line cannot learn the same exact move by TM. And when it comes to its final evolution, Victory Bell, Victory Bell is James of Team Rocket's only Pokemon that he's actually battled before catching it. Coming up next is Tentacruel, and Tentacruel actually has some very ridiculous details specified about it in Ultra Moon. According to its Ultra Moon Dex entry, its body is 99% water, and the remaining 1% contains the organ that makes its poison. I don't really get how this uh, anatomy works, but I guess we'll just roll with it. Looking at Tentacruel now, according to its various dex entries, normally they will have 80 poisonous tentacles. However, the longer one has been alive, the fewer tentacles it will have, which is actually kinda sad. Similar to the Nidoqueen fact we talked about earlier, in the Japanese Pokemon Blue, Geodude actually only weighs 2 kilograms instead of the 20 kilograms that it's supposed to weigh in every single other game. However, it gets by pretty clean on this aspect because thankfully for it, there are no mechanics involving weight used in the Generation 1 games. Oddly enough, it was shown in Pokemon Snap that despite the fact that Graveler has legs, it can actually revert to a legless form which grants it the ability to float. In Pokemon Red, Blue, and Yellow, Golem is actually the only Pokemon that can't be seen in the game at all unless you obtain it yourself with trading. However, the existence of Golem is implied by an NPC who just received their friend's Graveler through a trade themselves. Phew, well, there you have it everybody. It certainly has been a challenge trying to gather facts on every single Kanto Pokemon, and even though we only covered half of them in this video, I really had a lot of fun and I've learned some new things myself, and I definitely hope you learned some new things too. If you guys enjoyed this video and you're excited for the part 2 that's going to be coming out next week, be sure to give it a like and let me know which one of these facts was your favorite in the comments below. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe for new videos every single week, and while I can't say for sure if I have the guts to do this for other regions as well, I would certainly love to do so if it's something you guys want to see, so if this video does well, we will definitely consider it moving forward. With all that being said though, I will be back on Thursday for another video, so be sure to come back for that one, hit the notification bell so you can know when it goes live, and with that being said, I will smell you guys later.